The United States military has developed a number of helicopter armament subsystems since the early 1960s. These systems are used for offensive and defensive purposes and make use of a wide variety of weapon types including, but not limited to machine guns, grenade launchers, autocannon, and rockets. Various systems are still in use, though many have become obsolete. Topic. Introduction The helicopter has added much to the modern battlefield, fomenting new strategies and tactics to use and deny its capabilities. In the air, against land-based threats, and at sea, helicopters can be used to attack, defend, and transport to react swiftly to the fluid tactical conditions of modern combat. The United States Army was one of the first to experiment with helicopters, yet slow to fully explore the possibilities of armed helicopter gunships. An armed helicopter was proposed and rejected in the early 1940s. The Korean War experience prompted more experiments to explore the idea of air mobile tactics, and by 1962, armed helicopters, for attack and defense. That year saw the deployment of the UTTHCO Utility Tactical Transport Helicopter Company to help the South Vietnamese Army and to test new air mobile theory. Weapons used by UTTHCO were often crude and made from parts and weapons readily available in the field. By 1965, the United States had deployed a truly air mobile unit, the 17th Cavalry, which began to use more standardized armament. Throughout U.S. involvement in Vietnam the U.S. Army, U.S. Marine Corps, and U.S. Air Force would develop and use a number of armament systems designed for a variety of helicopters, and would pave the way for more dedicated attack helicopters. With the arrival of dedicated gunship helicopters such as the R-1 Cobra since 1967 and later the R-64 Apache, armament subsystems for non-specific types would begin to drop off, with mostly defensive armament packages remaining. Such armament packages, giving decidedly heavy armament to small or primarily transport helicopters, have become popular among second and third world countries who lack the funds for dedicated attack helicopters. Most of those systems bear some resemblance to the plethora of U.S. systems that follow in this entry. <laughs> Designated systems This is a list of systems as designated by the U.S. Army. Topic: <laughs> Armament subsystems for transport and utility helicopters. Topic: R-1 Iroquois. XM-3, XM-3E1, M-3, and TLSSTHE M-3, sometimes referred to as aerial rocket artillery, or ARA, consisted of two 2.75, 24-tube rocket launchers, one on either side of the aircraft, along with a MK-8 sight. The launchers fired in pairs, one from each side to prevent the aircraft from becoming off-balance. M3 systems were attached to the helicopter using Bell-designed stores racks. The only difference between the XM3 and XM3E1 was that the launch tubes on the E1 were 4 inches longer. The XM3E1 was standardized as the M3. A subvariant of the M3 system was developed in 1964 by the US Army Limited War Laboratory that allowed equipped helicopters to produce a protective smokescreen. Called the Troop Landing Smoke Screen (TLSS), the system used modified M3 launch racks to dispense M8 smoke grenades. This system was later tested using M6 and M7 riot control grenades. XM5, M5, the XM5, M5 system consists of a nose turret for a single M75 40 mm grenade launcher. The mount was fully flexible and controlled by the pilot via a hand-controlled sight electronically linked to the turret. The system either provided 150 or 302 rounds of ammunition. Note, this system was also part of the armament kit for the ACH 47A discussed later in this article. M6 series The M6 system was one of the first systems to make use of the XM156, M156 universal mount, providing two M6OC 7.62 times 51 mm machine guns on either side of the helicopter. This system would later be expanded upon, but initially gave the R1 increased firepower and an improved offensive system over the skid mounts originally used. 
The various development stages of the M6 system mainly had to do with the station to which the M156 mount was attached. The position of the XM6 is not stated, but the XM6E2 was fitted to station 69, likely forward of the main cabin, and the XM6E3 was fitted to station 136. Since the XM6E3 was standardized as the M6, station 136 is assumed to be the AFT of main cabin position that would become standard for M156 based systems. Some M6 systems were coupled the four guns with four MA2, a 2.75 two tube rocket launchers on each side of the aircraft, giving an even greater punch. This arrangement was later supplanted by the XM16, M16 system. XM9A variant of the XM6, M6 system, the XM9 substitutes the four M6OC 7.62x51mm machine guns with two M75 grenade launchers, one on either side of the aircraft. XM11, XM22, M22, and the Maxwell system Both of these armament systems were designed to allow the R1 to fire the AGM-22 missile. Sources claim that the XM-11 provided an XM-70 sight and support racks for six missiles, three on each side of the aircraft. However, U.S. Army FM-1-40 says that the XM-11 designation was unassigned, the M-22 was an improvement providing a more specific sight, the XM-58, and using the XM-156 universal mount. The M-22 also provided for a total of six missiles, three on each side of the aircraft. It is important to note as well that the XM-11 is associated with the standard SS.11 missiles AGM-22A, while the XM-22, M-22 system was designed around the U.S. upgraded AGM-22B missiles. The Maxwell system was a hybrid system designed by Warrant Officer Robert Maxwell as a field modification. Maxwell's unit had been sent both the M3 and XM11 systems, and he noticed that often aircraft with the M3 system returned after only firing half or less than half of their total rocket load. By removing one or two banks of rockets and reducing the total carried to 12 or 18 total rockets versus 24 and adding a single launching mount for an AGM-22 missile he effectively gave the aircraft both suppression and point attack capabilities. The general lack of point targets in Southeast Asia meant that SS-11, AGM-22 missile saw very limited use in general. XM-16, M-16 The XM-16, M-16 system mated the previous M-6 with either two M-157 or two M-158 2.75 seven-tube rocket launchers utilizing the M-156 universal mount. Sighting was accomplished by using the M-60 series reflex sight. The combined weight and aircraft limitations meant that only seven tube launchers could be used. XM-17 The XM-17 utilized Kellett pylons to mount two XM-159 2.75 rocket launchers, one on each side of the aircraft. XM-21, M21A Further variation on what had essentially become a basic system, the XM-21, M21 subsystem replaced the XM-16, M16's four M60Cs with two M134 7.62x51 mm miniguns. XM-23, M23 The M23 system provides a pintle mount at both main cabin doors for an M6OD 7.62x51 mm machine gun, with the weapon feeding from either a standard ammunition box or a larger purpose-built box connected to the mount. The M23 is specifically designed for long fuselage R1s XM-26 With the development of the BGM-71 tow missile Hughes had been given the contract to develop a launching system for the R-1. By 1968 development had shifted over to development of a system for the R-56 helicopter which was eventually cancelled. The XM-26 provided two three-tube launchers on either side of the aircraft, as well as the necessary sighting equipment. While the XM-26 was more of a test platform, the two prototypes were deployed operationally as an emergency measure in South Vietnam to counter the Easter invasion in 1972. XM-29 and the Sagami mount The XM-29 was an experimental door pintle for the main cabin doors of short fuselage R1s at the time the UH-1B, C, for an M6 OD 7.62 51mm machine gun. The problem with this system was that it could not be used in conjunction with external armament subsystems. 
far more common on such helicopters, including the later UH-1F, P, M specifically, was the Sagami mount, a skeleton frame mount that swung out from a fixed position at the rear of the cabin. This mount was designed for the M60D, but in certain instances, primarily by the U.S. Navy Seawolves, dual M60s, M2HB machine guns or M134 miniguns were fitted. Sources debate the origin of the Sagami name, with it being attributed to the soldier responsible for its creation, as well as, to the name of the U.S. facility on Okinawa where it was developed. XM-30 An experimental system, the XM-30 provided fully flexible mounts using the XM-156, M-156 universal mounts for two XM-140 30mm cannon, with 600 rounds of ammunition per gun. XM-31 Another attempt to up the firepower from existing systems, the XM-31 provided two M24A 120mm cannon in pods fitted to XM-156, M156 universal mounts each with 600 rounds of ammunition, and flexible in elevation only. XM-50 XM-50 is a designation for the combination of the XM-5, M-5 and the XM-21, M-21 armament subsystems, a common configuration used by U.S. forces in Southeast Asia. M-56A mine dispenser system for the UH-1H helicopter, the M-56 is composed of two SUU-13D, a dispensers on the M-156 universal mount, which is reinforced to handle the additional weight. XM-59, M-59A variation on the M-23, the XM-59, M-59 was modified to accept either an XM-213, M213.50 caliber machine gun or an XM-175 40mm grenade launcher in addition to being able to mount the M-60. XM-93, XM-93E1 This armament subsystem provides door mounts for long fuselage R1s UH -N for two M134 7.62x 51mm miniguns. The USAF also used this system on their short fuselage UH-1FP helicopters. These weapons are equipped with chutes connected to their ejection ports that direct spent cases and links away from the aircraft. The XM 93E1 is a variation on the system that allows both guns to be trained forward and remotely fired by the pilot using the M60 series of reflex sights. Note, the USAF was the primary user of this system and often combined it with two 7-tube 2.75 rocket launchers of varying types on two independent support rack and pylon assemblies. XM94A variant of the XM93, the XM94 substitutes the M129 40mm grenade launcher for one or both of the door mounted M134 7.62x 51mm miniguns. XM156, M156 not technically an armament subsystem, the XM156, M156 universal mount provided mounting supports and racks for a number of systems used on the R1 series of helicopters. A, A49E3 similar to the U.S. Army XM93, this system type classified by the Air Force uses mounts similar to those used in the M23 system mounting two M134 7.62x 51mm miniguns at each of the main cabin doors of the UH-1N helicopters. This system is likely suitable for other long fuselage R1 types. A, A49E11 referred to as the Defensive Armament System or DAS, this system is composed of two mounts for GAU-15, A and GAU-16, a .50 caliber machine guns or GAU-17, a 7.62x 51mm miniguns, as well as, two BRU-20, A or BRU-21, a bomb racks for current 2.75 rocket launchers. This system was also designed primarily for use with the UH-1N helicopter and is in use with the U.S. Marine Corps as well in this capacity, but is likely suitable for other long fuselage R-1 types. TK-2A variant of the minus one Tarkas for the CH-34, R-34 helicopter, the minus two Tarkas temporary kit two was developed by the USMC for their UH-1E helicopter. The system provides the same 4M6OC 7.62x51mm machine guns as the Minus One Tarkas, but adds two independent support rack and pylon assemblies to the system, for mounting an acceptable aircraft-style armament. Typically these mounts were used for 7-tube 2.75 rocket launchers of varying types, but were also seen tested with XM-18, M-18 minigun pods USAF Su-11, A. 
Emerson TAT-101 unique to USMCUH-1E helicopters between April 1967 and 1972 was the use of the Emerson Electric TAT-101 tactical armament turret 101 nose turret. The turret housed two M60 machine guns with 1,000 rounds total, and had 100 degrees in azimuth left or right, plus 15 degrees of elevation and 45 degrees of depression. The slew rate on the turret was 45 degrees per second. Jamming and the need for maintenance led to the turret's front fairing being left off to assist ground crews in quickly dealing with any problems, and these reasons combined in the USMC decision to drop the turrets from inventory entirely at the end of 1972. Emerson Mini TAT developed to a Canadian requirement for their Bell UH-1N Twin Hui, the Mini TAT replaced the M60s with a minigun. A number of these were loaned to the U.S. Army for use during the famous J. Catch experiments in the late 1970s. SH-3, HH-3AC King Sikorsky S-61 Emerson TAT-102CA version of the TAT-102 tactical armament turret 102 designed specifically for use on the HH-3A helicopter, the TAT-102C mounted a single M134 minigun in a fully traversable turret for specifics see the information for the TAT-102A in the R1 Cobra entry. Two such turrets were mounted on sponsons, one on each side of the aircraft. The complexity and questionable performance in the environment led to them being removed in favor of more conventional door-mounted weaponry. <laughs> CH-3EC King, HH-3E Jolly Green Giant Sikorsky S61R. The defensive armament system for the USAF's H-3E helicopters is described as standard to the HH-3E, and capable of being fitted as required to the CH-3E. The basic system comprises three M60 machine guns, one each at the forward door, the opposite emergency window, and the rear loading ramp. The forward two positions comprise pintle mounts on skate rails, while the rear loading ramp station comprises a pedestal mount on an armored floor plate. The floor plate slides on two tracks, forward and back, to and from its firing position at the edge of the ramp. Either the standard infantry M60 can be used, with standard 200-round ammunition boxes attached, or the M60D variant, feeding via flexible ammunition chutes from 750-round boxes fixed to the floor or to the armored floor plate for the rear loading ramp position. Topic. CH-21 Shawnee. XM-153 described as a system of four forward-firing M60 machine guns similar to the later M6 series for the R-1 helicopter. Not standardized. Offensive armament experiments were done using CH-21s with both fixed forward M2HB.50 caliber machine guns and forward-firing rocket launchers. Neither system was standardized, but both paved the way for similar systems on later helicopter types. Defensive armament Utco deployed with a number of CH-21s, and experimented with field expedient bars mated to the cargo doors, fitted with M37C.3006 machine guns and feed from boxes mounted on top of the weapon. Note, it would appear that similar mounts were fabricated for use with early R1s as well. Topic R34, CH-34 Choctaw, Seahorse. XM-4 described simply as a 2.75-inch rocket launcher subsystem for the CH-34. There is no information as to how many rockets the XM-4 was capable of launching. XM-6E1 For more information on the M6 series see the R1 entry in this article. The XM-6E1 was a variation of the XM-6 for use with the CH-34 helicopter. TK-1 A USMC weapon system to provide H-34 helicopters with offensive armament, the Minus-1 Tarkas temporary kit one featured two M60C 7.62x51mm machine guns, fixed forward on the right side of the aircraft, with ammunition fed out from boxes inside the aircraft. Also attached to these assemblies were two pylons, fitted with 19-shot 2.75-inch rocket launchers. Aircraft equipped with the Minus-1 Tarkas were sometimes referred to as 
Stingers. Defensive armament Both the U.S. Army and the USMC developed pintle mounts for use in the main cargo door and opposite window, mounting a single infantry type M67.62 51 mm machine gun, sometimes referred to as M60A, allowing the crew chief to fire the weapon while seated on the opposite side. The USMC tested mounting the heavier M2 machine gun, but found the vibration when firing to be detrimental to the aircraft. In all the mounts were imperfect as they blocked easy entry and exit from the main cabin. CH-46 Sea Knight Defensive armament The CH-46E Sea Knight has the ability to mount the XM-218.50 caliber heavy machine gun. On the left side of the helicopter it is mounted in the AO's aerial observer window just behind the co-pilot's seat. On the right side it is mounted in the gunner's window just behind the crew door. The aircraft is also set up to carry a RMWS ramp mounted weapon system which holds the M240D 7.62 mm medium machine gun. XM218 The XM218, 0.50 caliber aircraft machine gun is a belt-fed, recoil-operated, air-cooled, alternate feed weapon fired from the closed bolt position. It is capable of firing at a rapid rate of 750 to 850 rounds per minute. M240 DTHE M240D machine gun is a belt-fed, gas-operated, air-cooled, alternate feed automatic weapon fired from the open bolt position. It has a rate of fire of 650 to 950 rounds per minute. Topic: <laughs> CH-47 Chinook and ACH-47A Guns a go go. M24A defensive armament subsystem. The M24 provides a pintle mount for an M60D 7.62 51mm machine gun at either left or right front cargo doors on the CH47. The system feeds from standard 200 round ammunition boxes attached to the weapon. Note, the U.S. Army phased out the M60D in favor of the M240D and subsequently M240H. While the mount system designation remains the same, the mount itself has been extensively redesigned to accommodate the ammunition magazine and a bag for catching expended ammunition casings and ammunition links, as well as an improved roller on the pintle to prevent excessive and premature wear to the mount assembly. XM32A Defensive Armament Subsystem The XM32 provides pintle mounts for either M60D 7.62 51mm machine guns or M2HB.50 caliber machine guns at both cargo door positions and at both rear emergency hatches of the CH 47 helicopter, with weapons feeding from standard ammunition boxes. This system was developed specifically for the ACH 47 helicopter. XM33A Defensive Armament Subsystem – The XM33 provides a mount for either an M60D 7.62 51mm or an M2HB.50 caliber machine gun on the rear cargo ramp of the CH-47 helicopter. This system was developed specifically for the ACH-47 helicopter, with the weapon feeding from standard ammunition boxes. XM-34 An offensive armament subsystem developed for the ACH-47 helicopter, the XM-34 provides two M24A 120mm cannons with ammunition boxes on sponsons at the front of the aircraft fixed forward. Note, these sponsons were also fitted with aircraft-style hardpoints that allowed the mounting of XM-159B, XM-159C-19 tube 2.75 rocket launchers or M18, M18A 17.62 51mm gun pods. XM41, M41A defensive armament subsystem. The M41 provides a mount for an M60D 7.62 51mm machine gun on the rear cargo ramp of the CH 47 helicopter. The system feeds from standard 200 round ammunition boxes attached to the weapon. Note, the U.S. Army phased out the M60D in favor of the M240D and subsequently M240H, but it is unknown whether the necessity of a new cradle for the weapon as with the M24 above resulted in the system being redesignated. The mount is otherwise the same. Topic. 
CH 53 C Stallion, HH 53 per Mega Henry 53 Super Jolly, Pave Low, CH 53 E Super Stallion, MH 53 E Sea Dragon Defensive armament systems for the H-53 series and developments as used by the U.S. Navy have no known designation, but generally comprise pintle mounts at personnel or cargo doors or windows of the aircraft. These mounts are usually equipped with either .50 caliber GAU-15A, GAU-16A, or GAU-18, a machine guns, or 7.62 mm M60D machine guns. The .50 caliber weapons were later supplanted by the .50 caliber GAU-21, a machine gun, which featured a higher rate of fire. R-60 Black Hawk, SH-60 Sea Hawk, HH-60 Jayhawk, HH-60 per Mega Henry-60 Pave Hawk M139 The M139 Volcano is a mine dispenser system composed of racks on both sides of the aircraft for up to 40 canister mine, M87. Each canister contains six Gator anti-tank mine and one Gator anti-personnel mine. M144 The M144 is a defensive subsystem that provides mounts and cradles at the two windows between the pilot doors and the main cabin doors on the R60 series of helicopters, each mounting a single M60D 7.62x51mm machine gun. Note, the U.S. Army phased out the M60D in favor of the M240D and subsequently M240H, or M134 miniguns, but it is unknown whether the necessity of a new cradle for the weapon resulted in the system system being redesignated. The mount is otherwise the same. The USAF equips its HH-60 per Mega Henry-60 Pave Hawk with one or two GAU-15A, GAU-16A, or GAU-18, a .50 caliber machine guns, and or GAU-2 series 7.62 mm NATO miniguns. Example, 1.50 caliber MG in the floor, firing out of an open door and two 7.62 mm NATO miniguns mounted in the door gunner positions. S the external stores support system ESSS provides two stub wings each with two hard points primarily for external fuel tanks, but, it can also carry various weapon systems. When equipped with the Extended Range Fuel System ERFS, the system can support two 870L gallons or 1,700L gallons external tanks. The system feeds into the main fuel tank and not the engines directly. The ESSS can also be fitted with a wide range of weapons including up to 16 AGM-114 Hellfire missiles, rockets and gun pods, and other systems. An AWS-2 Ramixtel in development as of 2003, the Rapid Airborne Mine Clearance System RAMICS, can be considered an armament subsystem and one of the largest guns ever fitted to a helicopter, though its intended targets are strictly naval mines. Consisting of a single modified MK-44 Mod 030mm cannon firing the MK-248 Mod 1 armor-piercing fin stabilized discarding Sabo Tracer round, the RAMICS was intended to be mounted in the cabin of the MH-60S helicopter, and using its associated sensor package, target and neutralize mines at relatively shallow depths. The system is designed to provide a quick and effective mine clearance capability to complement existing methods and others under development for the Navy's Airborne Mine Countermeasures program. <laughs> <laughs> Armament subsystems for observation and other light helicopters HH-2 CC Srite Emerson TAT-102KA version of the TAT-102 tactical armament turret 102 designed specifically for use on the HH-2C helicopter, the TAT-102K mounted a single M134 minigun in a fully traversable turret for specifics see the information for the TAT-102A in the R1 Cobra entry. A single such turret would mount it in the nose of the aircraft. The weight of the mount was not suitable for such a small helicopter and the turret was often removed. <laughs> 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 
Topic: O6 Cayuse and MD500 Defender. XM7 The XM7 system provided twin M60 machine guns unknown type on the O6 series of helicopters. It is unclear if both guns were mounted together or whether they were mounted one on each side of the aircraft. As of 1969 the system was listed with the comment, "...development suspended", likely in favor of the XM27. This system was also tested on the YOH-5A during August 1964. XM8 The XM8 system provides a mount for one M129 40mm grenade launcher for either the O6 or O58 light observation helicopters. The system is provided with an XM70, E1 sight and 150 rounds of ammunition. The XM8's mount is interchangeable with the M27 system, this system could also be mounted on the O58 Kiowa, and was tested on the YOH-5A during August 1964. M27 series to M27 system provides a mount for one M134 7.62 times 51 mm machine gun minigun for either the O6 or O58 light observation helicopters. The system is provided with an XM70 E1 sight and a MAU56, a delinking feeder with 2,000 rounds of ammunition. The system has no movement in azimuth, but has 10 degrees of elevation and 24 degrees of depression. The initial XM27 featured a mount similar to a gunpod, which was quickly exchanged for a more aerodynamic fairing, as well as improvements to the ammunition stowage and other equipment on the XM27E1. The XM27E1 was standardized as the M27. The fairing was removed entirely because for ease of maintenance and to reduce weight on the M27E1. The M27's mount is interchangeable with the XM8 system, as with the XM8, this system can also be mounted on the O58 Kiowa. HGS-55 using a mount similar to that used on the XM8 and M27 series, the HGS-55 was developed by the McDonnell Douglas Helicopter Company formerly Hughes Helicopters to use the X-34 Mod 0 7.62 times 51mm chain gun. The weapon is supplied with a 2,000 round magazine, and the weapon fires between 550 and 700 rounds per minute. This system was not adopted by the U.S. military for use, and no export sales were known to have been made. O-13 Sioux and O-23 Raven XM1, XM1E1 in service between 1960 and 1972, the XM1 consisted of 2.30 caliber M37C machine guns mounted on the landing skids of either the O13 or O23 helicopter. These weapons were fixed forward, but flexible in elevation, with their ammunition 500 rounds per gun stored externally. The XM1E1 was the product engineering design. Note, what would appear to have been a variant of the XM1 system was used by UTTHCO on their HU-1 as later UH-1A for a short period. M2 The M2 system was a variation on the XM1, replacing the .30 caliber M37C machine guns with 7.62 times 51mm NATO M60C machine guns. The mounts were similar to the XM1, also providing flexible elevation, with 650 rounds per gun stored externally. AH-58D, OH-58D Kiowa Warrior Universal Weapons Pylon and Gun Pod The Universal Weapons Pylon is specific to the OH-58D Kiowa Warrior helicopter, and provides two support racks for various weapon systems. The racks, with stores mounted, may be folded 180 degrees upward for rapid loading into the C-130 transport aircraft, though the connecting umbilicals must be disconnected to prevent damage. There are at least 10 authorized armament configurations, which involve a mix of a system-specific gun pod mounting the M296.50 caliber machine gun left side only, the M267 shot 2.75 inches, 70 mm lightweight launcher LWL, the M279 2 rail AG M114 Hellfire Launcher, or a two-shot air-to-air Stinger ATAS launcher. The gun pod is fed from a semi-external magazine loaded with 500 rounds of linked ammunition. <laughs> MH65C Dolphin and MH68A Stingray 
Airborne Use of Force ALF Packageth U.S. Coast Guard has deployed the MH68A to its newly created Helicopter Interdiction Tactical Squadron HITRON, and it is the only helicopter in USCG inventory specifically tasked with the Airborne Use of Force ALF mission. These helicopters feature a defensive armament system composed of a single M240G mounted at the port cabin door, along with a Robar Arms RC-50 rifle attached to the cabin via a bungee cord for disabling hostile light vessels. The kit is also capable of being used on the HH-65C aircraft. When so fitted the aircraft is designated MH-65C. Armament sub-systems for dedicated gunships <laughs> R-1 Cobra M28 series Emerson Tat 141, the standard fixed armament for the AH-1G, AH-1P, formerly referred to as AH-1S production, AH-1Q, and initial AH-1S models. This turret unit is similar to the XM-64 mentioned later in this section, but was capable of mounting two M134 miniguns, two M129 40 mm grenade launchers, or one of each weapon. Miniguns fitted are capable of pre-set firing rates of either 2,000 or 4,000 rpm, while the turret itself has 114 degrees of motion left or right, 17.5 degrees of elevation and 50 degrees of depression alternate sources describe 110 degrees in azimuth, 20 degrees of elevation and 50 degrees of depression for the M280E1 model specifically. Each minigun is linked to 4,000 rounds of ammunition while each grenade launcher is fed from a 300 round magazine. The system is known to have four standard of variants the M28, A1, A3. However, the actual specifics between variants is vague. From the available information, suggests that specific variants were mated to specific iterations of the R1 helicopter. The initial XM28, M28 were fitted to the AH1G, as were the M28E1, M28A1. The M28A1E1, M28A2 was fitted to the AH1Q, while the M28A3, no developmental variation known, was fitted to the AH1P/S helicopter. There is the possibility that the M28A2 could have been the first unit designed to work with the XM128, M128 helmet sight system (HSS) developed primarily for use with tow-armed R1s. XM35, M35 an armament subsystem providing a single M1952020 mm cannon on the port inboard pylon of the AH1G, 950 rounds of ammunition were stored in boxes fed to the side of the aircraft. The system was primarily pilot controlled, but featured dual controls to be either pilot or gunner controlled. For this purpose the pilot was provided with a M73 sight. XM64 Emerson TAT 102A the TAT-102A tactical armament turret 102A was the initial main armament for the AH-1G helicopter, though designed as an interim measure. It is related to the TAT-101 mentioned in the R-1 entry. The turret mounts a single M134 minigun with 25 degrees of elevation, 90 degrees of depression, and 180 degrees of motion in azimuth, with a slew rate of 80 degrees per second. The TAT-102A was designated XM-64 by the U.S. Army. XM-65, M-65 The Cobra missile system is a functional development of the XM-26 and the TOW missile system developed for the failed R-56 helicopter. Originally designed for the AH-1Q and AH-1S Cobras, the AH-1F modernized Cobra was also rebuilt to use the system. The original iteration of the system comprises launches allowing for four BGM-71 tow missiles per aircraft pylon to be carried, and a SU or telescopic sight unit, to allow for targeting and guidance of the missile. The SU has been upgraded with the LAAT Laser Augmented Airborne Tow, a day-night range finder, and C-Night Cobra Night Imaging Thermal Equipment, a thermal imagine, FLIR system specifically for the AH-1S and AH-1F Cobra helicopters. M97 series and AA49E7 GE Universal Turret, the standard fixed armament system for the US Army's AH1S upgunned Cobra, eventually redesignated AH1E Enhanced Cobra Armament System or ECAS, and the AH1S Modernized Cobra, eventually redesignated the AH1F, as well as the US Marine Corps AH1J, AH1T, AH1W, and AH1Z helicopters. 
The system was designed to fit either the M197 20mm three-barreled cannon or the XM188 30mm three-barreled cannon. In practice the M197 was the standard fit and the XM188 was not adopted for service. The turret has 110 degrees of motion in azimuth, 21 degrees of elevation, and 50 degrees of depression, with a slew rate in azimuth of 80 degrees per second and in elevation and depression of 60 degrees per second. As with the M28 series, the specifics between variants of the M97 are vague. Five standard A models are known to exist, M97, A1, A4. Sources suggest that individual variants of the turret were specific to certain variants of the R1 as with the M28 series. The M97A1 and possibly the M97 was fitted to the AH-1S upgunned Cobra, the M97A2, A3 to the AH-1S modernized Cobra AH-1F, and the M97A4 to production R1Fs. Other sources say that the M97A3 was refitted to AH-1EECAS and the M97A2 was the initial armament for the AH-1S modernized Cobra, agreeing that the M97A1 was the original fit to the AH-1S upgunned Cobra. There is also the possibility that the differences have something to do with the associated equipment for the M197 cannon, including the use of the M89 or M89E1 delinking feeder. The M97 was also fitted to the AH1J, but it is unclear if the AH1T, AH1W, and AH1Z used variants of the M97 series. The subsystem used on the AH-1T and AH-1W has a designation in the USAF's Aeronautical and Support Equipment Type Designation System ASETDS, A, A49 e The turret in the system is also designated under the ASETDS system, as the GTU-1A. How this system differs from its U.S. Army counterparts is unknown. An amendment to the official military specification, MIL F85668, as put out by the United States Naval Air Systems Command on the 15th of November 1995, actually listed the AA49E7 V4 as inactive pending a new design and listed the system as relevant only to the AH1T tow. XM120 Emerson Tat 140, a competing universal turret design to the M97 put forward by Emerson Electric, the XM120 could be fitted with a number of weapons including the M60C 7.62x51 mm machine gun, M134 minigun, M197 20mm 3-barreled cannon, XM188 30mm 3-barreled cannon, and was in fact tested with the XM140 30mm cannon. R-56 Cheyenne The Lockheed R-56 Cheyenne got no further than operational testing of the ten prototypes before the program was cancelled. XM-51 A nose turret with one M129 40mm grenade launcher with 300 rounds. In light of the cancellation of the R-56 was proposed as a replacement for the M-5 system on the R-1 helicopter. Designed to be interchangeable with the XM-53. XM-52 Belly turret with a single XM-140 30mm cannon. Use on other helicopters was also debated. XM-53 A nose turret with one 7.62x51mm XM-196 machine gun. Also said to be suitable for the R-1 series of helicopters. Designed to be interchangeable with the XM-51. R-64 Apache M139 – An area weapon subsystem The only type classified subsystem for the R-64 series, the M139 is composed of the aerial rocket control system giving the aircraft the ability to fire members of the Hydra 70, Mk-66 2.75 in, 70mm rocket family, a dispenser interface controlling the M130 chaff, flare dispenser, also used on the R-1 helicopter, and the area weapon subsystem. The area weapon subsystem is made up of a single M233 30mm cannon, turret and assembly, ammunition feed, and other electronic components for the functioning of the system. The unit is capable of 100 degrees of motion in azimuth left or right, 11 degrees of elevation and 60 degrees of depression, and feeds from an ammunition magazine with 1,200 rounds.
Topic: <laughs> Ra 66 Comanche. Turreted gun system TGS, The Ra 66 Comanche was intended to have a gun system designed jointly by Boeing and Sikorsky. The system was to use the XM301 lightweight gun, and fed linked ammunition from a 500-round storage drum. The turret itself had 120 degrees of movement in azimuth, with 15 degrees of elevation and 45 degrees of depression. The TGS was supposed to be ready for deployment with the Comanche helicopter during the FY04 period, but the cancellation of the Comanche ended further development of this system. <laughs> 